All right, it is a fabulous day. It is so windy and it's cool outside. It's early in the morning. My husband's not even at work yet and my kids are busy doing other things and it's not a school day, so I have some free time. So Brian and I came out today and you can't really tell, but we put up all of my arches in the front of my garden and put up some of my trellising for my cattle panels. Um, got a lot more to do. We counted all the T-posts, made sure we had enough. We're gonna figure out what else we need to get. But I finished that and I finished some other things and so I was like, hey, now it's time to do the things that I enjoy. I love foraging. I love finding things on my property to use and reuse and using them in medicinal purposes, especially. The reason for that is because I have lived so many years cooped up in neighborhoods. And when we first came out this way and looked at this property, I went, okay, there was nothing here. It was just, I don't know how to say it. It was almost like, you know, pristine cut and there was, you know, pretty lawns and things like that. And there was nothing. So I've let it go wild because I wanted all that wild stuff again. I don't have a lot of woods. I'm surrounded by woods and I can use what I can out of there as long as I don't venture too far in the neighbor's areas. Um, but by letting everything go wild, I'm able to forage things on my property. I've got lots of stuff. The other day I picked five pounds of plantain leaf. Um, that was absolutely wonderful because that's more than I've had before. But I let a lot of the plantain go to seed last year and it kind of spread wild. So lots of plantain. I don't have any right beside me or I'd show you. Um, because I picked most of it. There's some. Let me show you what it looks like if you're wondering what plantain looks like. See all those long green leaves? That's plantain. I have plenty over here that I could come through and harvest as well. I just haven't yet. I was letting it get a little bit bigger and a little bit taller. But it's very beneficial. Look it up if you've never heard of it. And in fact, you can let it go to seed and it's called a plantain bean. And you can actually cook those up and eat them. Uh, it's actually really tasty. So I don't talk about foraging a whole lot just because it's kind of taboo. Some people like, you know, think that's weird and everything. I personally love it, every bit of it. Um, I harvest plantain, I harvest honeysuckle, I harvest dandelions, violets, um, wild raspberry leaves, I mean mulberry leaves, all sorts of stuff. Just anything and everything I get my hands on. And so today we're going to talk about a couple things that I've done just this morning uh, to start with. I ran around and I failed. An entire lunch bag with dandelion seeds. I've had a lot of people asking me about dandelions and so I was like hey I grow them organically I don't spray my yard I don't even use ant chemicals around these we just let the ant hills go so these are hundred percent pure and if you didn't realize that things that are on your property man they have so much more beneficial uses and they have so much more beneficial nutrients in them than the things you buy from the grocery store. So eating those dandelion greens, even though I'm not a big fan of them, they fill my body with all those vitamins and nutrients that I could not get from just buying bagged lettuce at the store. Um, a little bit different, but just something I do. So anyways, big bag, it's full. And all I do is I pick the stems and put them into a, a bag and shake them. And I shake them till all the seeds come off. It's okay if one or two stick, but I want to get off as many as possible. And that's it. And then that is my compost. I got bugs crawling on me. I let the bugs go wild too. So anyways, so I'm going to fluff all these out because I don't want to do that in the house just in case they go everywhere. But today, I want to talk about these jars and what I'm going to do with these. I actually scored these at the recycle center. I've cleaned them and sterilized them. I don't advise it unless you know you're looking for specialty jars. These are actually marked Atlas Mason. Now they're not an actual canning jar or a mason jar. I thought possibly that they were and that's why I grabbed them. Uh, they do have markings and stamps but they have expiration dates on them. And so I looked it up and this is from Classico Pasta Sauce. So it's a spaghetti sauce jar. It does have the ability to put rings on them. Most of the spaghetti sauce jars are the little tiny lid. This one can actually do like a full canning ring and top, but it's not advised to can with these. So if you ever find these, don't use these in your pressure canners. You might be able to get away with water bath canning, but I would just prefer not to. Use these for other things. So I'm going to be filling these with apothecary tinctures. I'm making a ton more tinctures this year, and one of them that I'm working on right now, I've 
already started to put in the jar and that is usnea or usnea depending on how you guys want to say it uh, it's basically just a moss that grows on branches and you can identify this moss in different ways but I have it everywhere and I let it spread and I let it go and I let it just be and then when it falls or the branches fall that's when I harvest I don't forcefully harvest it that way it has time to spread and put out its little spores and regrow so let's do some close-ups and show you this now okay there are different forms that this comes in the easiest way to tell if it is the usnea moss or usnea moss is it will get these little tiny they almost look like flowers or suckers off of a octopus or squid but they'll get those all over and so all of this is now completely usable for me so i'm just going to come through and pick it off i don't mind getting these little pieces on but you'll see where it comes straight off the bark and I'm just going to put it all into a jar. I'm going to pick off every inch of it that's in here because I don't want to waste any of this. These limbs will actually just end up in a burn pile. And then I'll use them as wood ash in my garden. So, you know, let me save what I can and have this wonderful harvest to go with. What are the benefits of Osnea? A lot of people don't know. It's a very, 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 very good type of lichen or moss or whatever you want to call it. This is a really nice piece here. Um, it's good for a lot of things. I actually saw Cindy's place get her granddaughter involved and they were grinding it down. I'm making tinctures with mine. I think it's just easier. I don't have to uh, do too much work right away. But the benefits of this is that it actually can help with weight loss. It aids in weight loss. It can help with your lung health. It has a lot of healing properties when it comes to wounds. So you can pack this onto a wound, like out, if you get hurt out in the wild, you can pack this onto a wound and it'll you know, help heal it and keep it sterile because it really doesn't contain any bacteria in it. And it doesn't have to really be washed or anything unless you, know, you see things like bird poop and stuff. You need to clean that off. Um, but it's just a really cool thing just growing in my yard. And I didn't know a whole lot about it until years ago when we first moved here because I actually thought it was just beautiful and I was going to build a big display in my bathroom. So I was going to put it on display in my bathroom because we collect a lot of, you know, things to put in jars and I thought that would be really pretty. But then I started looking up what it actually was and the benefits and the health for it. And there's all sorts of stuff on this stick. Oh, check that out. Can you see that? I don't even know what that is. Ooh, it's got spores, though. Let me move my jar. That is some sort of fungus or mushroom. It's weird. Oh, well. I'm not going to mess with that guy. <clears throat> so, anyway, I found out that there was a lot of benefits to this Usnea and I got really excited and decided to start doing more and more research and I gave myself about a year's time before I started venturing into what I'm doing now and I absolutely love it. It's fascinating plant or lichen and it has a lot of really cool things that most people don't know about. Do some research on it before you venture into it yourself and make sure it's something you want to deal with. All right, I've got the rest of this cart to pick through, so I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to do a walk around in the yard, because on windy days, it actually, like, blows down. Um, but, yeah, let's talk for a second first. So, I've already filled my mason jar up. <clears throat> a lot of people will grind this. You can grind it and add alcohol to it. You want to use vodka, 100% proof, or 95% at the minimum, because you really want a nice sterile alcohol. But some people will just grind this down and then add the alcohol, and you can put it in a crock pot and cook it. Um, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can do like the one day, you can do the three day, you can do the six day. I personally like, because I don't need it at the moment, I'm going to actually fill it with alcohol and let it sit for six weeks. And then I'll strain everything off. But anytime you're doing tinctures and stuff, you want to put them either in a sunny windowsill to help the sun kind of push all the, the good stuff out into the alcohol, or you want to put it in a dark place. So before you venture into tinctures, just look it up. There are lots and lots of people out there that do these, 
and everybody has their own way. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. It's just what makes you feel comfortable. I'm just going to take this, fill it up, and stick it on a shelf. That's what I do. Uh, packed away, out of the way, so I don't have to mess with it too much. And it's not going to come out. It's just a jar full of moss. And I'll just come back in six weeks, and I'll have a tincture. Now, if you don't know what a tincture is, a tincture is actually a soaked uh, medicine. That's the best way to put it. You're soaking whatever it is that you're making a tincture from, whether it's dandelions, whether it's nettles, whether it's usnea, you're soaking it in an alcohol base, and then you're going to extract it all, the nutrients and the vitamins and the, the medicinal uh, benefits, into the alcohol. And then you strain it all off, and then you use that accordingly. It can be used as drops under the tongue, it can be used as a mouth rinse, it can be used as a couple shots and some tea, whatever, depending on the item. So, tinctures are basically like cough syrup without the chemicals. That's the best way to put it. So again, lots of great uses in this stuff. If you guys want to look it up, like I said, go ahead and then go search your yards because even if you live in a neighborhood, you probably have some of this growing in your trees and you could do some benefits from it. So thank you guys for stopping by. I'm going to finish up my dandelions and I'm going to finish up this Osnia and I will see you guys next time. Bye.